NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has revealed some new surprising and puzzling discoveries that challenge our current understanding of the early universe. In particular, it has detected an excess of ultramassive galaxy candidates in the first billion years of cosmic history. These galaxies are up to 100 times more massive than expected from the standard cosmological model, and they seem to have formed much earlier and faster than predicted by the theory of hierarchical structure formation. How can we explain these ultramassive galaxies? Are they real, or just artifacts of the James Webb measurements? Do they require new physics beyond the standard model? Or can they be explained by some unknown processes of galaxy formation and evolution? These are the questions that a new study published in the journal Physical Review Letters tries to answer. In this video, we will explore the implications of the new study and the James Webb abundance problem for our understanding of the early universe. We will also discuss the importance of James Webb and Hubble telescopes for exploring the unknown aspects of the cosmos and how they can complement each other in testing and refining our theories of cosmology. So stay tuned and let's dive into the mystery of the ultramassive galaxies. The first section of the video is about what are ultramassive galaxies and why they are surprising to find in the early universe. The term ultramassive galaxy refers to a galaxy that has a stellar mass of more than 10 to the power of 11 solar masses, which is equivalent to about 100 billion times the mass of our sun. For comparison, the Milky Way galaxy, which is considered a large galaxy, has a stellar mass of about six multiplied by 10 to the power of 10 solar masses, or about 60 billion times the mass of our sun. So ultramassive galaxies are much more massive than the Milky Way, and they can contain hundreds of billions or even trillions of stars. They are rare in the present day universe, and they are usually found in the centers of massive galaxy clusters, where they have grown by merging with other galaxies over billions of years. But James Webb has detected six ultramassive galaxy candidates in the early universe, when the universe was only about 800 million years old or less than 6% of its current age. These galaxies are not only more massive than expected, but they also appear to be very bright and dusty, which indicates that they are undergoing intense star formation and have a lot of gas and dust in their interstellar medium. So how did these galaxies form and grow so quickly in such a short time? This is the question that puzzles astronomers and cosmologists because it seems to contradict the standard cosmological model which is based on the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model. According to this model, the universe is composed of about 70% dark energy, 25% dark matter, and 5% ordinary matter. Dark energy is a mysterious force that causes the expansion of the universe to accelerate, while dark matter is a type of invisible matter that interacts only through gravity and forms the scaffolding of the cosmic web. Ordinary matter is the type of matter that we are familiar with, and it forms the stars, planets, and galaxies that we can see. This model also predicts that the structures in the universe form hierarchically, from small to large. This means that the first stars and galaxies form from tiny fluctuations in the density of matter in the early universe, and then they merge and grow into larger and more complex structures over time. The model also predicts that the first stars and galaxies are very different from the ones we see today. They are expected to be very small, faint, and metal poor, because they have not had enough time to enrich their gas with heavy elements from supernova explosions. They are also expected to be very rare, because the universe was still very homogeneous and smooth at that time. But the ultramassive galaxies detected by James Webb seem to violate these predictions. They are very large, bright, and metal rich, and they are very abundant in the early universe. They seem to have skipped the hierarchical formation process and jumped to the end product of galaxy evolution. How can this be possible? This is the James Webb abundance problem, and it challenges our current understanding of the early universe. One way to explain the ultramassive galaxies is to assume that there is something wrong with the standard cosmological model and that we need to modify it to account for the new observations. This could mean that we need to change the properties of dark matter or dark energy or introduce new physics beyond the standard model. 
For example, some researchers have suggested that dark matter could be more complex than we thought, and that it could have some interactions other than gravity, such as self-interactions or interactions with radiation. This could affect the formation and evolution of structures in the universe, and make them more efficient and faster. Alternatively, some researchers have proposed that dark energy could be more dynamic than we assumed, and that it could vary in space and time. This could change the expansion history of the universe and alter the growth of structures and the cosmic microwave background radiation. Another possibility is that there are some new particles or fields that we have not discovered yet, and that they play a role in the early universe. For instance, some researchers have speculated that there could be some primordial black holes that were formed in the first moments of the Big Bang, and that they could act as seeds for the formation of ultramassive galaxies. Or, there could be some exotic forms of matter or energy that could enhance the fluctuations in the density of matter in the early universe and trigger the formation of ultramassive galaxies. These are some of the possible ways to modify the standard cosmological model to explain the ultramassive galaxies, but they are not without problems and challenges. For one thing, they have to be consistent with all the other observations and data that we have about the universe such as the cosmic microwave background radiation, the large-scale structure, the gravitational lensing, and the supernova measurements. For another thing, they have to be testable and falsifiable, and they have to make some predictions that can be verified or refuted by future experiments and observations. This is where the Hubble Space Telescope comes in. It can measure the ultraviolet galaxy luminosity function, which is the number of galaxies per unit volume as a function of their brightness in the ultraviolet. The new study, written by Nashwan Sabti, Julian B. Munoz, and Mark Kamionkowski, and published in Physical Review Letters, is titled Insights from Hubble Space Telescope into Ultramassive Galaxies and Early Universe Cosmology. It uses the latest data from James Webb and Hubble to test the cosmological implications of the ultramassive galaxies and to explore the alternative explanations for them. The study shows that any modifications to the standard cosmological model that can produce the ultramassive galaxies detected by James Webb would also affect the ultraviolet galaxy luminosity function inferred from Hubble. This is because the ultramassive galaxies and the smaller galaxies are both made of ordinary matter and they both trace the underlying distribution of dark matter in the early universe. Therefore, if the dark matter or dark energy properties are changed, or if there are some new physics involved, they would have an impact on both types of galaxies, and they would change the shape and the amplitude of the ultraviolet galaxy luminosity function. The study then compares the current Hubble data with the predictions of various cosmological models and finds that none of them can fit both the James Webb and the Hubble data simultaneously. It concludes that the current Hubble data disfavors a cosmological explanation for the James Webb abundance problem, and that the future Hubble data will be able to rule out or confirm this possibility with more confidence. The researchers also explore some alternative explanations for the ultramassive galaxies that do not require modifying the standard cosmological model. One possibility is that there are some systematic errors in the web measurements, such as calibration errors, contamination from foreground sources, or misidentification of the redshifts of the galaxies. These errors could lead to overestimating the mass and the number of the ultramassive galaxies and make them appear more anomalous than they really are. The study suggests some ways to test and correct for these errors, such as cross-checking with other telescopes, using different methods to estimate the mass, and applying more stringent selection criteria. Another possibility is that there are some unknown processes of galaxy formation and evolution that can produce the ultramassive galaxies in the early universe without violating the standard cosmological model. These processes could involve some feedback mechanisms that regulate the star formation and the gas accretion in the galaxies, such as supernova explosions, stellar winds, or active galactic nuclei. These processes could also depend on some environmental factors that affect the galaxy growth, such as the density of the surrounding matter, the merger history, or the radiation background. The study proposes some ways to investigate these processes, such as studying the morphology, the kinematics, 
and the spectral features of the ultramassive galaxies, and comparing them with the smaller galaxies in the simulations. These are some of the main findings and arguments of the new study, which tries to shed some light on the mystery of the ultramassive galaxies and the JWST abundance problem. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you have learned something new and interesting about the ultramassive galaxies and the JWST abundance problem. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to share them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time.